Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 34. In this episode we're going to add a heads up display so our player can see what's going on. Let's jump in. Where are we? Okay, there we go. So let's just jump in and write some code, shall we? Um, so the first thing we'll do is add a new class inside of our graphics folder. So source graphics and let's just call this display.lua. And we'll just add in the boilerplate we normally add so that our uh, Lua module can act as a class. So this means we need a table to hold a create method, or really to hold all of our class information. And we also need an instance uh, when, or we need to return an instance, which is just another empty table or an empty table to start with when we create our uh, display. So return instance. And a display needs to be able to draw. So unsurprisingly, it will need a draw method. And all of our draw methods take in a view. And this one is also going to take in the game as the second argument. So we can display information based on the game object or based on what's going on in our game. And to start with, let's just go ahead and do view in context, pass in a function, and we'll just print something to the screen to check everything is working correctly. So love.graphics, graphics.print. Hello, I am the display. Then inside of our game state class, where we uh, keep track of everything, uh, pretty much everything, um, we will require our display class from source graphics display. Dis display. We'll make sure that we attach an instance of it to our game state object. So we'll say, let's stick it above the inventory. Instance display equals display.create. So that will give us uh, the display that we just made or an instance of the display that we just made. And then when we draw our game, uh, just before the debug stuff, we will say self.display draw and one thing we'll need to do is make sure we pass in self as the first argument to draw just to uh, uh, just to make everything work really so when we call a method with the um, with the colons with the two dots uh, we always pass in a reference to itself as the first argument okay let's see what happens Attempt to call method draw a nil value. So this will be because we need to attach the draw method to our display. Instance.draw equals draw. Attempt to index local view a nil value. Yep. So it would help if we passed in some arguments here. So we'll pass in view because that's what we uh, that was the second argument and self which will be the game state. And of course, it will be self.view. Aha! There we go. So, a couple of mistakes there, uh, mainly because I've just turned the laptop on. I've um, had a bit of a break from recording just because I wasn't quite getting what I wanted and I was uh, pretty busy with my, uh, with my regular day job finishing up a project. But uh, here we go, we're back. So, great, we have hello, I am the display. Um, but it currently uh, scrolls with the rest of our level. So let's fix that. So let's um, go to our view class. And inside of our view class, we have a couple of different methods for drawing at different things. We have in context, which draws a typical object in our game. That object will um, pan left and right as the player moves. And um, what else do we do? We scale it up as well. And we also have a method called in background context. We use this for drawing our big background image. And the difference is this image doesn't pan left and right. 
So um, if you notice, we don't have the love.graphics translate method. So what we'll do is we'll add a new one and we'll call this in display context. And we'll use this method just for drawing things which we want to be part of the heads up display or the user interface or whatever we whatever we want to call it. So like our other context methods, it will take self and a draw function. And we will do all of the setup that we need to do in order to get ready for drawing. And this is so that we don't have to do that setup every time we want to draw something. So we'll grab our scale and we will push our graphics context. And what this does is it will reset um, any previous transformations that have been applied to our graphics. So translations, scales, they're all uh, different transformations. So push and pop lets us manage those. Um, and now anything we do between push and pop will just be applied to uh, to this drawing session. So we want to scale, oops, graphics.scale. We want to scale up. So we're drawing at the same size as the rest of our game. And we also want to call our draw function to actually do our drawing. So this at the moment looks exactly the same as in background context. But now what we're going to do is introduce a new variable and we'll call this uh, display offset. Uh, let's set it to say 10 pixels to start with and now when we translate our screen we're just going to add our display offset and for the background context um, where we don't currently have a translation we're going to add one love.graphics.translate uh, zero for X but we'll also translate by the display offset and hopefully what this will do if I've got the um, sign right right way around I can't remember whether display offset should be positive or negative at the moment um, but what this will do is it should shift everything in our game down by 10 pixels and that will give us a, an empty bar at the top of our game that we can use uh, for drawing our heads-up display there we go. So now if we go into display, instead of calling in context, if we call in display context, which is now the only method which doesn't translate things down by 10 pixels. Aha! Um, it should work. Of course we need to add in display context to our method as well, or to our instance. Instance in display context equals in display context. Cool. So now we have this black bar at the top of our screen for drawing our um, drawing our heads up display on top of, and also it stays in one place. So now let's actually get on and draw something useful. So let's uh, start with the health um, health bar. So let's just uh, check to see if we have a get player method yet on our game state. We do excellent. So we can grab hold of our player. Then we can say for i equals zero to uh, player dot hp. We want to do something. Let's uh, draw a rectangle. The mode we want is filled. We're going to start. We'll start at zero, zero, and we'll um, put it in the right place in a little while. And we'll start with a width of, let's say, a width of four and a height of four just to get ourselves started. Um, this will draw in the same place, so we also want to increase x by um, i times 4 as well. So this should give us a bar because every time i increases we should start at a... we should start further to the right of the screen. Let's see. 
Good, there we go. Now if our player takes some damage, that bar will get shorter. Okay, now let's do some fine tuning and uh, put it in the right place. So feels like the width could be a little wider. So that's this one. Let's uh, put the width to about six. I think four is okay for the um, for the height. And let's start. Let's offset it by two pixels from the top. Um, I think we can actually go to four pixels for the offset. Cool, that looks okay. Now of course we want to pull these values out so when we look at this code next time we actually remember what it all means. So um, let's do that. So we'll say local um, so we'll call each section of a bar a pip and we'll say pip width equals four. So we can use pip width here. We'll say local um, oops, health bar x is going to be equal to four. Local health bar y. So this will be the start of our health bar. Health bar y will be equal to two. So let's use those values as well. And um, we'll put these on new lines just to make everything fit in the window. So plus health bar X here, health bar Y here. Then we want the actual pip width. Is this pip width? Yes, yes it is. And then um, pip height. Okay, and let's just uh, check this works. So take some damage. Take some damage. Good. There we go. Um, so the final thing we'll do, or not the final thing for this episode, but the final thing we'll do for the health bar is we'll set the color to something uh, a bit more appropriate for health. So we can say love.graphics.setColor. Uh, red, green, blue, alpha. So we will set red to 100, green to 200, and blue to 100. And we don't need to worry about alpha because we don't need any transparency. And at the end of this um, drawing this bar, we'll just set the color back to be white so it doesn't affect anything else that we draw. So white will be 255, 255, 255. Good, now we have a green health bar. And finally, to keep things uh, nice and neat, we'll introduce a new function called draw bar. And, oops. I'm going to start it with an underscore to remind myself that it's a private function, so it's not something we want to expose on our display class. And now we can move all of these into our draw bar method. And the other nice thing about this is it makes sure that whenever we draw a bar, we set the color back to the value, it, other value we want afterwards. So we need to take some arguments here. We need a pip width, a um, pip height, and we'll call this bar start and bar end instead oh sorry not bar end uh, bar s I'll call it bar x and bar y I guess bar x bar y oops bar y and bar x 
Very good. And then we can just pass these values into a function call. Drawbar. Um, now I need to remember what these values were. I think this one was six, this one was four, this one was four, and this one was two. Oop, temp to index global player a nil value. Ah, of course, we actually need to parameterize um, the number as well. So we'll call the number n. So now we can say player.hp is the first argument. Good. I think the bar is actually drawing properly now, and it wasn't before. Um, I think there was probably some overlap before, or maybe it just looks longer now that it's green. But either way, it's working, so we'll we'll leave it at that. Okay, so the next thing um, I want to do in our heads up display is let's um, display the current weapon we have equipped. So in order to do that, we actually um, let's start by looking at our inventory class. So our inventory has a get item um, method which will return the current item. Uh, so let's look at an item like the sword. Um, and the sword has a reference on the actual class of the sword to its sprite. And if we want to draw um, draw something in a different graphics context, we actually need to get access to the image rather than the sprite. Because if we call draw on a sprite, it will always draw using view in context, and we want to draw using view um, in display context. So. There are a couple of ways of getting around this, but what I'm going to do is actually add a new method on our sprite class, um, and we'll just call it get image. And it will return self.image, because if we look down here, we have um, a reference to the image, which is exactly what we need. And let's set this on the instance as well. Get image equals get image. So now inside of our display, we already have a player. We can also grab the inventory, or we can just grab the item actually. Um, there's no need to get hold of the inventory, so we can say game get inventory get item and this will give us the item we need and now we can say love.graphics.draw and I'll see if I can remember this one we should be able to say item.sprite get image and at least to start with let's just put in zero zero and see what we get there we go. So we have our um, punch icon drawn at zero, zero, and if we pick up the sword, it changes to the sword just up in the uh, top corner here. Now let's uh, move it to the top right of the screen rather than the top left. Um, so this requires remembering how wide our screen is. So I'm just going to look inside of main.lua to start with because I know we pass these values into the view. Yep, 270 by 180. So if we draw this at x, um, so we can say 270 minus 8 will give us the width of our um, sprite because all of our item sprites are 8 by 8 pixels and let's offset it by 2 so we can say 260 and let's do 1 down let's see there we go there we go
let's just pull those values out as well so we can say local um, item icon position equals 260 say X and item icon position Y is again just going to be equal to 1 to my composition Y. Okay, so now when we pick up our sword, we actually see the sword in the top left corner. Oh, sorry, top right corner. And now we've got a health bar going on as well. So we still draw the current room number, and I think we do this inside of maps. So let's, uh, before we finish up this episode, let's get rid of that because we no longer we no longer need to know that, at least not at the moment. We might add it back in later, but now we've actually got a um, got a real quote unquote real display going on, real heads up display. Uh, let's start removing some of the really obvious information or really obvious debug stuff, especially if debug mode isn't turned on. Great, and because I think we've got a bit of time left for this episode, let's also um, add in a second bar to show how many potions we've collected. So we currently don't do anything when we collect potions, so to start with we'll go into our inventory and we'll add a new property on the instance called potion count, which will start at zero. And we'll add a method called add potion, which will just do self dot potion count equals self dot potion count plus one, and we'll make sure that method is available on our instance potion count equals potion count. And now inside of our potion, which is in magicpotion.lua, um, inside of pickups, so we haven't looked at these files for a while, um, but inside of pickups we have the item pickup, which handles all of our items currently, and the potion pickup, which handles our potions. So currently we have this collision method, or we already have a collision method, um, which plays a sound and then gets rid of a potion. So all we need to do is grab our inventory and then call add potion. And uh, nothing should happen, but nothing should break when we collect a potion. Oops, something did break. Attempt to call method add potion a nil value. in inventory add potion so ah yep typo this is why you shouldn't rely on autocomplete too much or you know it's fine to use autocomplete as long as you're thinking and um, it's pretty late I'm not um, <laughs> my mind is drifting a tiny bit but anyway I wanted to get an episode out so here we are so add potion add potion let's see Good. Now, inside of display, we've already got our inventory, or we don't, but now is a good time to grab it. Inventory equals game get inventory, uh, which was a method we added last time. Then we can just change this to inventory get item, and we can just call a make a second call to draw bar and here we can use inventory dot potion count and we'll make the let's just uh, make it the same to start with 
Um, except we're going to start. Uh, let's start at hmm, six. And we'll need to make it a bit narrower as well, which is already pretty. Let's see. Pip height is the third argument, so we'll make this two, and maybe we'll start at seven. It will actually. Ah, this is the height. The, the number to use, fair enough, the width, the height, the bar x and the bar y. So width, height, x and y. So y we actually want to move down to 6. I was expecting, have we got bar x and y the wrong way around or am I just not? bar x and bar y. Four, six. There we go. Um, uh, anyway, we can tweak the numbers later. So the actual thing I want to do here is add in the color as a parameter. Now the nice thing about set color is you can pass in the arguments individually like we do here, or you can just pass in a table as long as that table has three or four numbers in it. So for our HP, we'll pass in 100, 200, 100. In fact, let's just pull it out to uh, health color equals 100, 200, 100. And here we'll use magic color. And uh, let's say 200, 100, 200. So this should give us a purple color. Good. Now, interestingly, when we are at zero, it looks like, well, first let's see if it works. It does work, but we currently draw our zeroth uh, pip to the screen. So what we need to do is for n equals zero or for i equals zero to n minus one. Just to make sure we have an accurate count, there's one potion. Two, three, four. Good. Excellent, and let's just tweak these a bit. So let's make, um, let's see if I can actually get this right. Width, height, so width of six is fine. Let's go for a height of three and a height of two. Both of these start at four, one starts at two, one starts at six. Much better. Good, there we go. So we'll stop here for adding um, for adding a basic display. Um, we've what have we done? Let's just recap. So turns out extracting this draw bar function was pretty useful because uh, we were able to use it multiple times. Um, our display draw function is very procedural at the moment, which I'm I'm not a massive fan of. But a lot of this is just pulling out local variables and there's no real getting around the fact that when we use love2d um, love's drawing api is a very procedural api so i guess that's okay for now all right thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time have a good one bye for now oops